Hello friends, thank you for joining me again. I am continuing now with Daily Art Adventure number 530. I'm still waiting for my clapper, Mr. Wright. <laughs> my dear friend Wright told me he bought one of those for me for Christmas, but we haven't been able to connect since Christmas for him to give it to me. So I'm going to have a clapper. I think that'll be fun. That'll just be part of my shtick. Okay. But I don't have it yet, so I'm on my own. Started, I've already done two broadcasts of me doing this experiment, really. I'd have to call it that, an experiment, painting oil on aluminum. I've done three, maybe four, uh, two portraits and one landscape. I enjoyed one of the one of the portraits, at least was a sant, portrait of Santa, which I enjoyed very much doing on aluminum. Anyway, part of, and... Uh, this is part of a bigger project. Here's the photograph. I'm sorry I'm reviewing for some of you who've already seen all this. Um, it's a street corner in Flagstaff, Arizona, where our son and his wife lives and our granddaughter. My wife and I were visiting. I took pictures all over town. That just happens to be one. I did a no-tan sketch. We talked a whole lot about no-tans a couple weeks ago. Then I did a color sketch, which turned out quite nicely. I wanted to do one more painting small painting before i launch into the real thing this this painting the canvas is down in the garage waiting for warm weather it was uh, the high temperature today by the way in raleigh was 35 degrees which is i know nothing compared to you, my old northern friends but that's pretty chilly for around here anyway so i'm waiting for warm weather because the the canvas is seven feet tall and about three and a half feet wide so th this ratio exactly all right let's get painting now I've got two layers, or two different applications. It's all dry, which means I can do my favorite thing, which if you follow me, you know what that is. <clears throat> to, the favorite thing to do to a, a dry painting, and that is to do glazes. Woohoo! Why do I like it so much? Just because I'm nuts? Well, of course, I'm nuts, but besides that, uh, visually why do I like it and the answer I always put it in a colloquial just so you me you and me can remember it here it is ain't a color made that don't look better with something else on top of it let me say that again ain't a color made that don't look better with something else on top of it some of you might be thinking I don't get it what does colloquial mean <laughs> the rest of you recognize that that's improper English and then all the English professors say, there's no such thing as nah, get out of here. I don't get that. Yeah, 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 whatever. You know what I mean? Improper usage, whatever. That's what, the, that's what the professors like to call it, I believe. Anyway. But the high school English teachers who still speak good English, they know exactly what I mean. Anyway. Um, so why do I like doing glazes? Because transparent colors are more interesting than opaque colors. They're more complex. and uh, Man, I don't want to get into this too deep. I've, I've given this lecture so many times. I don't get into the whole thing again, but here it is. This is not a matter of opinion. I am not saying, I personally like transparent colors better than opaque ones. That's my personal opinion. <clears throat> that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's a matter of statistics and mathematics. <laughs> A transparent color is more complex. I prefer the word rich. Transparent colors are richer than opaque colors. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I've get, I've done dip, I've done uh, you know diagrams like crazy talking about that. I don't just don't want to get into it today. So there we go. So um, if I to use very very stupid language, I could say simply. Transparent colors are prettier than opaque ones. Now, if I was arguing with a philosopher, I would certainly not use the word pretty, pretty. <laughs> I do not do pretty paintings. I do beautiful paintings, not to be confused with pretty paintings. Okay. Um, <laughs> whew, the boy's hot tonight. <laughs> um... That actually, painting just got a lot better, by the way. Not, you may not have noticed, but with the, with this, I did blue up here, but I did blue and then purple 
all in here. And I, I basically simplified, or perhaps a better word would be, I consolidated my composition. Um, it's now quite, it's more clear what my compositional intention was. Medium, mid-tone, light, dark. The dark sort of shaped like a lowercase b. Get it? Mid-tone, capital J, and light. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff I don't want to talk about tonight. Partly because I, I, I repeat this stuff so often. And I know there's new people on, but you'll hear it eventually. I just, uh, I don't want to take every single detour presented to me. Because I want to talk about other things tonight. And one of the things I want to talk about, I want to repeat a little bit of what I said the last time that I painted on this painting last week on on aluminum. Because I think it's, it's worth stating re-emphasizing if you will. right now I'm doing a warm gold orange yellow gold colors uh, now on the this light stuff in the foreground I tell you this painting just got so much more interesting so much prettier than it was just a few minutes ago I'm, I'm, I'm almost astounded at, at the improvement that just swept over <laughs> this painting in the last few minutes I'm not yet done yet I'm gonna do a little bit more okay I what I do want to mention and as this I started to say what I I talked about this the last time I did this painting I want to reiterate a little bit when you are experimenting as I am here as I am I'm not an expert by any means not an expert at painting on aluminum okay so it, that means what I'm doing now is an experiment check granted absolutely that's what it is I believe when you're experimenting if you're a good artist if you're a beginner don't pay any attention to what I'm saying right now but if you're a fairly competent somewhat competent artist then I'm gonna strongly recommend <coughs> that when you experiment in a new medium, any new medium whatsoever, that you go in the direction of discipline rather than freedom. If I may make that somewhat artificial distinction, but okay. Rather than getting all artsy fartsy and expressive and loose, which can be really fun, but I think it will diminish the, the value of your experiment. So when you are experimenting, what I'm recommending is that you go toward discipline. Another way to say that is go toward, usually, toward realism. That's not strictly so, but gen whoops, generally speaking. I don't, hang on. Hang on, you got a little crisis here. I do not want that dark orange right there. I want to warm up this sign this sign slightly, but not nothing like what I just did. Okay, I'll be doing some, I'll be doing some lifting out there, won't I? Okay, that's all I'm going to say. So, when you, when you're experimenting, I strongly back learn the medium uh, instead of instead of taking the opportunity to do wild and crazy, you know, co college art major type stuff. By the way, part of the reason I have this opinion is because that is w what I just described is not what I did in college. I did I went like most of my students. I went kind of crazy into experimentation. And I look at, I honestly look at the art I did when I was in college as a tremendous black hole in, in the years of my development. Um, I, I, in high school, I showed great promise as an artist. Uh, then I went, I, I didn't start my major, to, I you know, switched majors. And during the two and a half years then that I was an art major, as I look back, it was a, generally speaking, a, a giant chasm in my improvement as an artist. In other words, I did not improve. I disimproved because of the overall culture of the art academy, shall we say. So there you go. 
And it was, I gave myself over to much experimentation. And sure, it was like, it was groovy, dude. <laughs> this was in the 70s, right? But there was a very little value. And, it, and it, I do believe it hampered me considerably. It, it took me, literally took me years to recover from my uh, experience as an art major. Some of you who were art majors, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You, know, you agree with me. The rest of you are going, what? I don't get it. What? Is my music quit? Oh, God. Now I can start with music over again. I'm not sure why. Quick time. Strange. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You. Hang on. I, I do want some music. Must have some streaming issues downstairs as I'm competing with some, some bandwidth for people downstairs, I believe. Okay, enough of that. Now, let me. Now I'm going to move your. I want to move you guys a minute. Um, I learned this lesson last time, a couple times when I was painting on this earlier. When I had the the light right over my painting as normal, it was way too much light. And I'm going to pick you up here so you can see how much uh, aluminum is still showing through. Um, can you see that? Kind of. You get. I know you're getting more glare than anything else. There, you can kind of see. See the the aluminum showing through there. Okay, so the reason I'm showing you that is, first of all, that it looks really cool. Secondly, and I'm, I'm happy about this, I have actually too much aluminum showing through, or way more than I need, uh, which means I'm free then at this moment to... Um, sorry, working with my music again. There we go. I'm free to... Slap <laughs> some good uh, opaque stuff on this painting without losing the the beauty, the iridescence of the aluminum. Okay, one of the, I, I some people paint on aluminum just as if it was they were painting on a on a board on a panel. In fact, some people just just of the aluminum and go and they and then they call it you know oil on aluminum and. I disagree with that mindset quite strongly. They're, of course, they're, they're welcome to do that, but they're losing the opportunity to to have the magic of the aluminum uh, showing through. It, it gives an iridescent feeling and just adds another whole element to the painting and the painting process that, that you really can't get uh, any other way. So I am big on allowing the aluminum to show through quite a bit. All right, now, since our last escapade into aluminum painting last week sometime, I forget what, Daily Art Adventure, by the way, for those of you who are new, that's what DAA stands for in the title, it's Daily Art Adventure. That'll be a little bit more obvious when I get my movie director clapper machine um since our last escapade since our last adventure i have come up with a concept that, that to me might might be huge it is this that the more careful drawing, rendering, realism you have in your painting. Okay, now I meant, why do, obviously, why do I mention that right now? 
Because look at this. Look at how many of you have never seen me hold a brush in this manner to do a painting, except when I'm doing my signature. This is that death control grip I usually I usually rail at, usually scream and holler and have a tantrum and say, don't do that. Because most of you need to learn to not do what I'm doing right now. Let me finish my thought. So here I am doing hyper tight stuff, realism. The more accurate rendering realism that you have in your painting, the more freedom, looseness, expression, expression, art marks you ought to have in your paintings. Okay, and let me say that phrase again with all of the interruptions. The more tight realism you have in your paintings, then the more loose art marks you ought to have in your painting. Okay? This, that's, I've never put it quite that way before to myself, to you, to anybody else. So here I am right here, right at the, this moment, doing tight realism, like to the max, right? However you want to say that, like hammer down, crazy, crazy um, tight realism, correct? That means I must follow up this here few minutes, <laughs> this here few minutes, I didn't mean to say it that way. I must follow up this period of extreme tightness with a brief moment of extreme looseness. Okay, and I'm going to see, we're going to find out together, we're going to find out if that really helps my painting or not. I think it will. I really think it will. Okay, hang on. Let me put these two brushes down. I'll come back and use those again. Up here in my, this is my upstairs studio, by the way. Some of you are getting a little familiar with my house. I come up here to escape from all the kids, four kids, ages two, four, six, and eight, downstairs. And so I can't broadcast downstairs often because of the noise. So I bought a new easel and I come up here. But anyway, this is my upstairs jar of <laughs> brushes. <laughs> a much, much limited set compared to what's downstairs, as you know. Okay, here's a couple very fine uh, sable. Sable brushes. And one, one fake synthetic, actually. Um, several months ago, I started this series of what I'm calling traffic paintings. I technically, in my mind, this this painting, the big one I'm going to do, fits into that category. It's we, I, I'm doing traffic paintings, which means basically cityscapes, but not shrinking away from rendering traffic automobiles. Okay, because normally. I just treat the cars as abstractly as I can get away with. But I changed my mind a little bit. I said, no, I think I should, I think I should do the our cars accurately. So I did, especially the first, I did two so far. This would be my third traffic painting. Not cutting one, I did about three, two or three years ago. And, uh, now that I've been staring at those paintings for a while, that's where this principle came from. Because in, in both of my first two, I spent a fair amount of time, attention to detail, doing pretty realistic automobiles. And now I realize that uh, having rendered the automobiles very realistically, I should have introduced more mess or mess up into those very paintings because of the tightness. And I often, I'll do it again tonight, I've often quoted my old friend uh, Neil Watson 
You can Google him if you want. Neil Watson, pen and ink. He said, for every drawing mark you make, you should make an, what he called an art mark. Sometimes I call it just a messy mark. An expressive mark. I'm not crazy about the word expressive because one of the biggest myths about art in our culture, in Western civilization, one of the current biggest myths is that art is about self-expression. Like we, that we are doing art in order to, you have to get the gesture here, in order to express ourselves, right? Nothing, in my opinion, I mean, I, I abhor, utterly abhor that, that mindset. I, I, I detest it. Absolutely detest it. That's enough of that. I'll get all upset if I talk about it any longer. <laughs> so I don't like to use the word expressive mark as if, again, as if, as if that's what I'm doing. It's expressing myself. But by expressive, I just mean loose, non-literal non, um, marks. All right. There's a sign, a traffic sign, a street sign, that I believe is very, quite important to the to the overall composition. Um, not because I want people to be able to read it. In fact, I would rather they they didn't. But they probably, because the letters are just big enough, they will be able to read it. They'll they'll scrunch up their nose, squint, and say, "What's that say, Aspen?" Where is this? Because my point in this painting is not to do a travelogue for uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. Nothing wrong with Flagstaff, but that's not my point at all in this painting. But I'm gonna th that sign is I feel like is critical to the overall composition. Okay. okay, I'm gonna show you a trick right now that I if you watched me for a long time. You might have seen me do this before. Let me show you. So I'm putting down some pretty thick, warm white. So that's titanium with a little bit of, um, a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of cad yellow, fake cad yellow. Okay, and here I have a fan brush. Ready? Let me let me make bring this out a little bit so you can see my hand. I'm gonna put more paint, same color, on the same on the same spot right there. Same brush. Wipe it off again. Here's the point that I want to make. When you're doing this, this what I'm doing here, creating a glow, even a streak, a streaky glow. You have to do it fast. You cannot do it slowly. You cannot do it slowly. If you try to do that slowly and carefully, it will look like absolute, forgive me, crap. Music just got a little weird. Let's change that one. Now, do I want to do some other glow? I had an airbrush right now. We just go psst, hit that right there and make a little glow. Um, uh, if I had a mop brush, which I do not have, I have one downstairs, but I don't have one up here. And I don't want to leave you guys. Okay, so I just picked up a, an old, worn out. Uh, soft brush, synthetic brush. <laughs> and using my finger. I should have done the glow first and then the streakiness. That's what I normally do to do this time. Okay, so there's there. That's all right. Let me zoom in now. 
Hello, Amari. <laughs> I'll try to translate your comment later. Okay, now the last thing we're gonna do for this stop for this street light is mix up. Let me show you what I'm doing down here. Adds a little bit more titanium to the to that white, so it's the slightly lighter than what I've been doing. I'm gonna pick up a palette knife. Got it. Now back to the painting. Put a dab right there. And I'm done. <laughs> Hola! <laughs> I'm out. Um, that is the brightest, lightest, brightest mark that you can make on a canvas, or aluminum, which is which is warm white with a palette knife because it's ray, it's mirror, mirror smooth, so it reflects light more than anything else. That's enough done with that light. Let's go somewhere else now. Um, I want to leave this area and do some of the um, mid tones. Again, those of you who may be following me for the first time or not, you haven't been following me very long, please understand that all this stuff that I'm doing right now is very, very, very finicky <laughs> for me. Not, not my typical loose. And this is a good example of what I mean when I talk about when you're experimenting in a new medium which for me is painting on aluminum. When you're experimenting like this, I believe it's a good idea, generally speaking, to go tight, go disciplined. Because you'll learn much more about the medium in this tight mode than you would in the loose carefree, quote-unquote, creative mode. Creativity. Let's talk about this for a minute. I've talked about it before, but let's do it again. In the art world, in the art realm, and really, I could really, in, in this, I mean all of the arts, dance, music, drama, literature, and so forth. In the arts, um, first of all, creativity ain't all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> um, a lot of people outside the arts or beginners in the arts feel like being creative and again the gesture here is <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> they a lot of people think being creative is like a high 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 value in the arts and i don't believe it is it's a high value in school in an art major and that's why most art majors graduate from college not being very good at their craft because they weren't taught craft they were encouraged to be creative don't get me wrong creativity is important I'm, usually i'm defending creativity because i do believe it's the most important single form of intelligence or kind of intelligence way more important than uh being having good uh, short-term recall so that you do so you can pass tests um, being creative is way more important in the real life than short-term memory but I way too many people that think in my opinion of course, everything I say here is my opinion I don't have to tell you that do I in my opinion being creative is not the highest value it's a it's a value it's not the highest. What is the highest value? Ooh, I got myself into this conversation without 
planning to answer that question. But it's a very good one. Hierarchy of values. I have, I've written on this actually. So I just have to remember what I wrote. <laughs> um, the lowest value is self-expression. There is value in self-expression, especially for those, for people who need therapy. Art therapy is a great field and I think, I think it's wonderful. But it's not what I'm doing. I'm not doing artwork because I need therapy. Hardly. I'm doing artwork because I love it, because it's in me, and because I need to pay the mortgage. I love it when people come up to me when I'm painting on the street. And they say, what's your inspiration? Again, because they think, they think that art is mostly about self-expression. It's like, what's your inspiration? I'm sorry I say it with that sarcastic voice, but I'll let it go. That's how I feel about that question. And I usually say, that's easy. My inspiration is mortgage. <laughs> and they usually laugh. Thank goodness. That is my inspiration. I need to pay the mortgage. I don't sit around and wait till I feel like painting. It's my job. I get up, get my butt out of bed, go out and paint. In this case, it's 10 after 10 in the evening. It's my job to paint. Why not? Why aren't I downstairs? Actually, what would I be doing? I'd be practicing my trumpet. So I'm going to be practicing either very little or very late tonight. Probably both. Uh, so I don't sit around and wait for inspiration. This is my job. And I tend to be more of a night owl than a, than a morning person. So thus, here I am upstairs in my studio at 10 o'clock. So anyway, so my inspiration is uh, paying the mortgage, but I don't wait for inspiration. It's my job. Okay, but so the, on the hierarchy of values in art, now I'll just limit it to uh, cre therapy is, is a value. Self-expression is a value. I don't pay any much attention to it, but generally speaking, some people do, and they need it. Next level up in a hierarchy of values, in my opinion, is creativity. Creativity is good, but it ain't all that. It's just good. Yeah, you should be creative. I've spoken many times about the donut of creativity. Real quickly, you, you want to hit the donut, not the air around it. So if you're stuck in a rut doing the same thing, like if you have a formula, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you have a formula for your painting and you always do it exactly the same way all the time, you're not creative enough. You're stuck. You miss the donut because you're in the hole. Okay. On the other hand, if you're way crazy creative, like I talked about, most of us were in college. Um, your your creativity is untethered. It's unproductive. You're not really learning much. You're not really gaining or benefiting much from your creativity because it's too, it's not tied to what you already know. Okay, so that's, I could go on and on and on about that one. I'm sure I will some other time, but not tonight. So, um, self-expression is valuable, but it's the least valuable aspect of art. Creativity is valuable. In my book, it's the second lowest value in art. And I'm just going to limit it to three levels right now. The, the next, the highest level is, ma is mastery. Skill, knowledge, understanding, mastery. Now, if I were to put a fourth value on top of that, it would actually be wisdom, which answers question, the why questions. Well, why do we do art? Why do we do art the way we do it? Why am I uh, a, a realistic painter instead of a wild and crazy modern art person just doing you know, black squares and stuff like blue squares and stuff like that? That gets into the realm of wisdom. But I'm, I'm going to just talk about the three values tonight. The lowest value is self-expression. Second lowest value is creativity. Highest value is mastery. Now, again, please understand that what I'm saying flies in the face of the academy. The universities, virtually every university, virtually every art professor in every university in the Western world would disagree with me. So what gives me the chutzpah 
dis to disagree with all those professors? Well, the part of the answer is every great artist in history, dead and alive, agrees with me and disagrees with the professors. So that's the short answer to that question. So I'm not all by myself in this opinion. Okay, but do, I'll take a minute to talk. Why, why do I say that mastery is the highest value? Well, first of all, you can make a living with it. Now, what about those weird, weird, weird modern art people? Don't some of them make millions of dollars? Yes, they do, but they're not doing it with artistic skill. They don't even claim to have artistic skill. They have socio-political personality skills. And yes, some people work very hard. Uh, uh, Picasso is a good example of this. Picasso is a, a fairly bright art student. And uh, you hear some people say, oh, we should take Picasso seriously because he was a genius before he, before he went crazy, you know? You look at the stuff he did when he was 14 years old. Oh, my God. I am mocking here, folks. This is mo the tone of mockery. Why can I say that? He had discipline that I didn't have. His father was an artist, so he did have discipline. I'm going to say something now that is scandalous. Picasso was not... I was as good as Picasso was at age 19, 14. Let me show you. Just I happen to have up here... I don't have a painting I did. <laughs> but I just, just, I just happened to be standing. I made this guitar with virtually no power tools when I was 16 years old. <laughs> A lot of stuff that I found laying around the house. Uh, I didn't think that was particularly crazy. Well, that's because I, I was me. When I look around now, how many 16-year-olds with no power tools and no instructions and no YouTube and no anything else, nobody telling them how to do it, Make some in what, of course, when it's in tune, I tune it so it's a chord. Anyway, that's just one crazy example. So anyway, I, I'm, I know I'm sounding arrogant. Forgive me if David, if David's on here, he's gonna get, right, give me heck for being so arrogant again. <laughs> My point is, Picasso was pretty good at, at his craft, but he abandoned his artistic craft because he, there was something else he was even better at. He was better at socio-political personality skill. He had a genius for knowing what to do when to rock the art world. And that's how the modern art world is, is built. Not on beauty, but on statements. On shock art, even. And his Les Demoiselles, believe me, was shocking when he first brought it out. Okay, so I'm going to leave this <laughs> long tirade. <laughs> You're, you'll be glad to know. Oh, I was I was answering the question, why do I put mastery at the top of the list? There we go. Okay, let me continue. Why do I put mastery? First of all, because you can make a living with it. <laughs> Largely, and I'm going to open my, I don't usually, I usually play my, my, cards pretty close to my chest, but I'm going to expose myself to you guys a little bit right now. Um, don't tell everybody, please. But you, some of you know this. If you, if you look at my resume, if you look at my website, very carefully, you'll say, doggone it. This guy used to be a pastor. Now, now that doesn't mean the same thing to everybody in every culture. So I have to be really careful about that. But let me just say this. Part of the reason I became a pastor at age 21 <laughs> and continued in that field, uh, off and on, well, uh, off and on up to the present day, but I don't get paid for it anymore. I get paid for artwork. But I will just say this. I just Here's the point I want to make. I, I went into, quote, unquote, the ministry, the Christian ministry, to a large degree because I care about people and I have compassion and care about people. I care about people um, prospering. I care about people being mentally and spiritually healthy. Fair enough? That's not too shocking. And you atheists and you Muslims and everybody else listening should be able to say, okay, yeah, I can understand that. Okay, so you don't have to get all upset. Anyway. Um... Part of the reason that mastery, I put mastery at the top of the hierarchy of values, 
is because of what it, mastery does to the soul of the person who masters something. It is, it induces health. You might say, well, what about, what about, um, Vincent van Gogh, van Gogh, for you Europeans. Well, it didn't help him much, did it? Oh yeah, it did. He would have been, by the way, the, the details of his death are still on, on, look it up. It's very, we're not sure what, that he killed himself. Does be that as it may, let's just assume that he did. Um, I want to get all conspiratorial on you. But it's an interesting conspiracy. Um, he would have been worse off if it weren't for his art. His art saved his life for the last 10 years of life. It didn't, just didn't save it quite long enough or well enough. Um, but mastery, and this is what all young people should be taught. You want to feel good about yourself? Learn how to do something good. Learn how to do something well. It doesn't mean you become an arrogant jerk. Like me. <laughs> I just said that for David. Um, who always manages to catch me being arrogant. You know? um, those of you who are good at something, you know of which I speak. It's only those of you who aren't particularly good at anything yet, perhaps some young people, you're not sure what I'm talking about. But you will be. It's not the only answer. There are a lot of very unsuccessful people, broken, tragic people, who have skills. Don't get me wrong, I understand that. But generally speaking, having skills goes a long way, I'll say, towards shepherding, shepherding one's own soul. <laughs> okay? Now I'm sounding like a pastor, right? We are responsible, largely, for the shepherding of our own soul. That's why some of us pursue spiritual realities. One of the reasons, one of the reasons, or one of the evidences that we are whole people is we're able to keep our heads when others are losing theirs, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so um, this is a motivational talk. You want to want to feel good about yourself? Learn how to do something well. Okay, I just absolutely talked you guys to death tonight and this broadcast is getting a whole lot longer than I ever expected but before we go tell you what before we go I talked a whole bunch at the beginning about if you do a lot of careful stuff then you must do <coughs> excuse me a fair amount of loose stuff so let's zero in on this sign again just for a minute all right pretty tight got a fingernail in my rag here. Uh, likewise, this sign right here. And this sign right here. You see this, this one down here? Right there? Very tightly rendered. Now that's just one way to loosen it up. That's not the only way. That's just one way. I've got some fairly bright red paint on my brushes right now. Let's do some and this sign is basically red and white, so no parking sign. Do you see I just made a mark, a random mark, that shows up there and down here. Am I going to keep that one there? I don't know. Probably. Let's go back up to here now. Do you see I'm allowing my brush to wander around? And make random, really meaningless, so to speak, meaningless marks. That is meaningless in the sense of uh, realism. Not right now. Right now I'm doing realism because there's a red border around this sign. But now I'm not doing realism. But that's an art mark. Go back to my finger in a rag. I'm going to modify one of the marks that I just made a little while ago down here. This this red mark on this car. I like it, but it's just a little bit too much of a good thing. So I'm going to not erase it, but push it back a little bit. And um, this guy's wearing red. Okay, that was a good mark. Can you guys see that? Let me pick you up and take you for a ride for a second. Here we go. 
There, do you see that? That was a very successful mark. Now, I'm not done with that guy. I may come back. I'll probably come back and give him a little bit of definition. In this case, I did the mess first and the drawing second. S same same uh, result. Get it? Okay, so again, a little bit of a smudging off. All right, that's enough. I'm going to let you go now. This painting is not done, although I do like what is happening to it, generally speaking. Quite happy with it. What makes me happy about a painting is not, well, is two things. One, that it's accurate. And two, that it's messy. <laughs> I'm really working on some of you. I know I am. I know I am. I'm working on myself, doggone it. <laughs> Let's do a glow on the back of this, this tail light here. Ah, this is looking nice. It got a, the whole painting got darker tonight. Uh, the street light brighter. I, I'll need I need to redo the, the the go lights, the green lights. This all got darker, and the tail lights here got darker. And let, let me do one more thing before we go, okay? And that is some headlights of cars coming the other way. And I got to tell you, the 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 painting um, just really took on a, a new level of life here with the changes I've made tonight. Now I'm excited about this painting. Still not done. Um, and again, everything you're seeing me do here fits that the description of when you're ex when you are experimenting in a new medium, knuckle down, buckle down, lean in, work on it, get it right. Get it right. <coughs> <coughs> My cold is almost gone. Happy to say, just the, just coughing up some of the little remainder stuff. That's way down deep. Okay, so what I've got on my brushes right now is. Oh wait, I, I keep doing this. I leave sentences hang. I leave thoughts dangling. Okay, two things that make me happy about a painting. Number one, accurate rendering, and this this painting is coming. It's getting there. Number two, mess. Expression. I don't mean expression. Um, art marks. Loose marks. Messiness. I need to show you this part of the painting right here. Just so you can see what's going on. Hang on, hang on. There we go. Tell me. Tell me that ain't sweet. That is nice. And there's going to be a man walking across the road right there I'm about to get run over evidently but we won't worry about him he's, he's watching out for himself <laughs> little reflection on the road people love reflections period just take that to the bank people love reflections reflected light Don't make the mistake of think, thinking people like to see light on stuff. What they like to see is light off stuff. Doing a sunlight hitting a yellow vase. You might think that's the challenge, but it's not. What people enjoy is seeing sunlight hitting the yellow vase that then bounces on the white tablecloth. I've never said it that way before. That was pretty good. Let me say it again. Don't make the mistake of thinking people like seeing light on stuff. No, people like seeing light off stuff. Bouncing off stuff. That's just a cute way to put it. Okay, did you catch that? Uh, it's 1030. I've been going long enough. I am going to stop and read your chats which i love doing and then i will bid you a fond adieu i i will say i'm i really am much 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 happier with this painting 
I, I want to say, dang, if this isn't going to be a good painting. Okay, two things make me excited about a painting. Accurate rendering, which I'm getting here. Number two, really fascinating art marks, mess, interesting marks. Okay, and I've got plenty of both in this in this painting. That's what's making me like it. And that's what I want to carry on my seven foot tall version. All right. Thank you guys for comments. Let me go way back. Jane Grayson, my dear friend. Thank you. Jane's special because she bought how many, Jane? Uh, several of my abstracts. At least I think it was several, Jane. Anyway, bless you. Um, yeah, thank you, Jane. So Jane has some, some originals hanging in her house. And she very graciously and very truthfully says... I wish everybody could see the real things because you think the videos show about 10%. Jane, I'm afraid you're right, right? You just, people have to develop an, a, an imagination for looking at things on video. Raymond, I saw that comment earlier. Sorry to hear it, my friend. The Academy did you bad too. Some of us are working hard to, to overturn that. I'm working on a, I've been saying a book. It's probably not gonna be a book because it's just not happening. I'm gonna do a series, hopefully next in the next two years, a series. <coughs> a special podcast or video cast about modern art probably called the subtitle will be explaining or understanding modern art and Raymond there's so many of us that need to do that hello Malcolm thanks for the wow <laughs> I Mel Malk and then a tongue sticking out wow that's nice I like it appreciate it <laughs> um Quay Buen Chabayo Trabal trouble trouble trabalho no that's trabalho somebody help me and translate here Amaris good comments Monica thanks for joining me David yes yeah I did see your comment about putting in a uh, 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 waitress great idea too late <laughs> part of the reason is my client has already seen the painting and its current state and sort of approves of it if you know what I mean but I do think that was a very good idea. You should have been there on Friday night right beside me. Give me that idea. Art is hard work. Thank you, David. Uh, David, thank you. He's one of my friends, one of many, who's not afraid to give me feedback. The sidewalk behind the truck seems wrong or not noticeable. <coughs> uh, um, correct. It, you are correct. It's just not done yet. Here, I'll show you. Just, I don't know if you can see. Blah, blah, blah. Can you see... The, the sidewalk goes in right there, you know, so there's a parking space and I haven't painted that yet. Yeah, so there's going to be a little, a little line right there to indicate that the, the edge of the sidewalk. I haven't done it yet. Thank you. Good point. Monica, wow, cute. David Mercer. <laughs> David was listening. <laughs> and he caught me being humble again <laughs> thank you david so glad you're there you just make the you make the experience complete <laughs> oh man now he says he's good as picasso well let me, let me i don't know let me, let me reiterate something picasso was a freaking genius i mean off world class off the charts in his socio-political personality skill that's why he did what he did and he was a good artist Part of the reason I react is some, some people just go apoplectic, orgasmic in their praise of his artistic skill. And I roll my eyes and say, really? And I could name 30 masters. Rembrandt, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, uh, Bouguereau, uh, and 30, 50, 100 other men and, or women could mop the floor with Picasso in his artistic skill. You understand? So, yes, he was decent. He was good. I'm speaking, anyway, anyway, anyway. But when he was off the charts, genius, world, absolutely world-class genius, was sociopolitical skill, personality skill. He knew what to do, and he had the artistic skills to do it. So, that will be in my book. <laughs> All right. Portuguese. Oh, thank you, Cos, my friend. Thank you for translating. I wondered if it was Portuguese. Anyway, okay, thank you so much. Uh, what a good job. Thank you, Amari. Thank you, guys. I love it. Appreciate your company. You make the, my life so much more complete and full and fun. I'm not kidding. That is absolute truth, and I appreciate it. So I'm going to call it a night. Tomorrow will I be 
I should be broadcasting tomorrow. Oh, maybe not. Taking a very special trip down to meet our special daughter, <coughs> Melody. So I may not paint tomorrow. Hope to do something. Okay, thanks guys. Love you. If you haven't if you haven't uh, subscribed, do so. Leave comments also. And uh, if you like this, share it with your friends. <laughs> That's I always say. If you don't like this, keep that to yourself. <laughs> It'll be our little secret. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Okay. <laughs> Good night, Monica. Appreciate.